Have you ever wanted to collect data from Twitter, but were put off by how confusing the API can be? In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with basic Twitter API access so you can download data and do some interesting analysis like this using just one line of code. To get started, just head over to the Twitter developer portal. I'll put a link to it below so you don't have to go Google around for it, and you'll be greeted with this page here. Now this is a very powerful API, so there's a lot of stuff on this page and it may look a little bit intimidating at first, but relax, I'll walk you through it because we're just going to use a very small portion of the API today to cover data collection of public tweets and following lists and things like that. They have other capabilities which are directed more for app builders, like if you have your own app and you want to allow your users to log in via Twitter and or your app wants to tweet things on their behalf then that's a whole nother section that we're not going to talk about. So Relax is actually a lot simpler than this lets on. The first thing you'll need to start is to get a developer account from here. So just scroll down a little bit, you can read a little bit of the background on this, and we're going to be looking at the standard APIs, which are the free ones, so we want to start with that. And you just need a developer account, so click here for developer account, and you'll learn a little bit about more what they want, uh, how to apply for ones, so you have to apply for an account, it's pretty easy. You just have to explain to them what you want your app to do, even if it's not finished yet. Just say you want to collect data for X, Y, and Z purpose. It was pretty easy. They even allowed me in. So what I wrote for my application was, I want to build a wrapper around the Twitter API to convert the response from JSON to CSV, which is what my data platform does. That I'll also link to below if you're interested in that. Now that you have your developer account, it's time to decide what kinds of public data we want to pull from Twitter. Well, I know Twitter is a big place for politics, so what better thing to do than check out the follower lists of real Donald Trump and Barack Obama and compare the two different lists. See maybe which one has more fake followers than the other ones if we can find a way to spot them and just do some basic analysis. So to do that, I want to look at this section here called Accounts and Users. So I click on this, it'll expand, and it'll show me a few options. So like, like I said, managing accounts are some advanced things we can do with the API, we're not interested. In that, we just really want to do following and getting users, more reading actions. So we click on this, we can see here, there's something called get the followers list. So I want to get the followers, I want to see who's following Donald Trump and who's following Barack Obama, and compare those two lists to see if there's anything fundamentally different between a Barack Obama follower and a Donald Trump follower. So let's check out this API reference, and this will have links to show me more details for each of these endpoints. So let's check out followers slash list. And if I scroll down here, I can see some details on how this endpoint works. So it shows me the resource URL, the URL I'm going to need to hit to get the data back. It shows me the response format, JSON. And this requires authentication is very important. It says, yes, you need to prove that you're using a legitimate Twitter app to access this. Basically, all of the endpoints have this. However, you want to make sure this only says yes, and it doesn't say something like user context next to it. Because if it says yes, user context, it means we can only access this as a logged in user. But I'm just going to show you today the simplest thing to do is how to access this on behalf of an application. So I have my test Steve C app, and you have your test app. So that app is actually what's going to access this data. And it's not going to be in what's called a user context because the app is not an actual Twitter user. So it looks like we're good to go here. The app can access this outside of a user context. Another thing to pay attention to is the rate limit. So this says here that for every 15 minute window, we can only make 15 requests. So it's basically like one request a minute, which is extremely slow. So we'll get into ways around this in another video, but just something to be aware of before you go and use this. And here are the parameters, meaning what are the inputs to this endpoint. So Twitter allows you to put in either the user ID or what's more simpler is a screen name or the username, which would be either real Donald Trump or Barack Obama. And this cursor is going to be very important. It allows us to paginate through. So when we make the initial request, we leave this blank, and then we'll get back a subset of data, and that data will include a cursor that if we want to use to get the following parts of that list, we enter that on our subsequent request, and we'll get the next part of the list. So first we'll get 200, then if we want to get the next 200, we put that cursor in here into the cursor endpoint, and we'll get the following 200, and then just keep going until you go 200 at a time and exhaust all however many million followers they have. So they give you a nice sample request here. And the big thing that they don't show you here is the authentication. So if you were to try to run this right here, you would not get through because you're not authorized. Bad authentication data. So how do we authenticate using our app? 
Well, I'm going to show you. So go back to your Twitter developers dashboard, find your app, and click on Keys and Tokens. So here you should see four different values. We're only interested in the first two to do basic app authentication. So this is going to show you the API key and the API secret key. Now I XXX and YYY'd mine out here just so you can't steal mine for now. Uh, but you should have your own. And I'm going to show you now using the one line of code we need to convert these two values into what's called a bearer token that we can then use on our request. So we would put the bearer token in the header like standard OAuth and then this suddenly would approve us and show us the data. So to do that, check out this page here. I have a link to it below. It's called Getting Started with Bearer Tokens. And all you have to do is Twitter makes these really simple, is I give you one line of code, you execute a curl command. So you copy this command and then open up your terminal, run this, and where it says API key, you substitute this value here, API key or XXX in this example, colon, and then you put in the API secret key, which is right here, YYY. And then you run this in curl and you'll get back a response very similar to this where it says access underscore token. And you copy this access token and put it in a safe place. And then you can reuse this over and over and over until you decide to revoke it. I don't believe it expires, although I could be wrong. You may want to check on that. So now let's try that example request again, but this time with the bearer token that we generated from the last step. So copy this URL again and open up your terminal and let's just try it in curl. So type in curl and then quote the URL and hit enter. So again, we expect it not to let us in. It's going to give us an error, bad authentication. Now let's try it again and add the OAuth header. So use the dash H flag to add a header and it's going to be authorization colon bearer. And as you remember in the last step, when we hit this curl command to get that token, you get it in the response under access token. So copy that value, or if you put it somewhere safe and then paste it in here, right after where it says the word bearer, just paste that in. So this is actually my real token, which I'm going to revoke before publishing this video and hit enter and you'll get some real data back. So now I have the raw data back in JSON and you can just save it to a file. Uh, I'll just put it to desktop. And let's open it up and see what the sample file says. So here Twitter gave us back, I didn't even look at the request, but this looks like a bunch of different users that are following someone and it shows for each user, it shows the location, they have a URL, this person has a YouTube channel, it shows you the username, a bunch of other things about the user. Cool. So now we know how to get JSON back from the Twitter API to get a list of users' followers. And remember, you can only do this once per minute, so be careful with rate limiting. Now you may be saying, well, this is great. I have this JSON blob, but how do I get it from JSON to visualization? Well, you're free to write your own custom code, and you can take it from here. Or if you want to do this quickly without writing any code, it just so happens I maintain a data platform that can do this for you in a matter of minutes. So if you head on down to the link below, you can check out the Twitter data platform I have here. This is a link with resources that cover how one can access the Twitter API we talked about using the CVC data platform, which goes and does all this messy work for you and going from raw JSON to beautiful CSV to visualization. So here we can see the same URL we looked at for followers, but on the CVC data platform. So let's check this out. So this is basically like using curl, but in an easy to use format. So the platform asks me for my access token, which we used before. So I'm just going to paste it in there. And then here I can type in the username. So let's do real Donald Trump. And you'll see that as I'm typing, the CC platform is constructing the URL it would use for me. And if I click on the direct tab over here, I can actually copy the same exact curl that I would use. So as I type, this will update the curl command for me. So this feature here, the URL builder, is free to use forever. You're welcome to hop on here if you don't want to write your own curls. Or if you want to do something neat, you can use the data platform to go and execute this for you. And it's going to go and get all that JSON for you and then immediately parse it automatically into a CSV. So you can see it just finished and it suggests me the interesting collections. So it found through that messy JSON which one of the collections it parsed it into are actually the followers of real Donald Trump. So I can download it here as a CSV instead of looking at it in JSON like the raw API gives me. So why CSV? Well, I can load it into a spreadsheet pretty quickly and get an overall glance of what's going on. 
So here all of the columns correspond to those JSON fields that we got back. And some of the interesting ones I want to know are here is the user's follower count. So each row represents a follower of real Donald Trump. And this column here shows for that follower how many people follow them. So it kind of indicates how much clout does each of Donald Trump's followers have. And we can compare that to Barack Obama's. So here I can see this follower of Donald Trump has five followers. This person has zero. When they have zero followers, it's kind of sketchy. Maybe it's a fake account or a new account. Who knows? This person has nearly 9,000 followers. So that's probably a real person who has some clout and presence on Twitter. So that's interesting. But how can we visualize it? Well, it just so happens I prepared a Jupyter notebook with code that will go and visualize these CSVs for you so you can compare some interesting statistics between Trump and Obama followers on Twitter. So I have a link to the source code for this below so you don't have to rewrite all this. You just need to provide your own data if you want to do any alterations to it. So you can see here, I'll just walk through this quickly, I loaded into Pandas the Trump follower CSV and I also repeated this procedure for Obama followers. Now I used a feature on the Steve C platform called Workflows, which lets me do automatic pagination between each of those 200 requests like we talked about. So it's stitched together for each of them I have 6,000 followers instead of 200. So this is showing the most recent 6,000 followers of Trump versus Obama. So again, it's not a complete data set. If we wanted to get the full like 70 million for each, we could do that in another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. It would involve doing either rate limiting at one per minute or doing something more advanced by getting the IDs in larger batches and then splitting that up to get user details. We can go on that in another video. So real quickly, I loaded this up into Pandas. So I have two data frames and then I combine them together to get all followers. So you can see in Pandas, a data frame is really like a fancy way of saying an Excel spreadsheet. So I can see I have here on one of my columns is the input. I have real Donald Trump here. So all these columns on the top are Donald Trump followers. And I can see here their location, and I can see the number of followers that they have. It's hidden in this middle part where it hides the columns. And on the bottom, I have Barack Obama followers. So again, each row is a follower and all the columns will line up. So I get the exact same data for both Trump and Obama. And then here, what I do is I want to do is make a special flag for when one of those rows has zero followers. I apply a Boolean condition where I see if the follower count equals zero, then it's true they have zero followers. Otherwise, it's false. So this creates a new column in my pandas data frame that I can use to visualize below. And then here I just do some basic visualization in a square format so I can post this on Instagram very quickly uh, to just show kind of what's going on between the different accounts. So if you look at the first one real quick, it shows for each account, what's the average number of followers for their followers. So for example, of the 6,000 Donald Trump followers, the average of those 6,000 only has 60 followers compared to Barack Obama follower has an average of about looks like almost 90 here. So this is saying that of the 6,000 sample, the Obama followers tend to have more clout on average if you want to think about it. And again, this is only a sample of the most recent 6,000 out of like 50 million. So this is definitely not um, meant to be conclusive. This is just an example of things you can do. And we can see what the code looks like is first you group by the input dot username. So again, this is either going to be Donald Trump or Barack Obama. So we create two groups and then we want to get the users dot followers count. So how many people follow each of their followers? And then we get the mean here, which is nice and pandas. And then we do some graphing at a title, add some colors, blue versus red, and we can plot it. We do the same thing here with uh, the friends count. So the second graph shows how many out, how many people are Trump followers following in Twitter. They call it friend count. So this shows that not only do Donald Trump followers have fewer followers, but they also tend to follow more people than Obama followers, meaning that they follow a lot of accounts, but they're not followed back versus Obama, which have high followers and they follow fewer accounts. So things are looking pretty good for Barack Obama, but let's take another look at the data because means can be deceiving. So if we look at the percentage of followers with zero followers, meaning maybe fake accounts of the most recent 6,000, Barack Obama is actually leading. His account has a little more than 40% of his most recent 6,000 followers have zero followers, meaning either their brand new legitimate accounts just getting started and maybe Twitter onboards them to follow him, or they could just be fake accounts. Um, no one really knows at this point compared to Donald Trump is maybe about 37. Also, this doesn't look statistically significant, so this is probably just noise. And then here, another just quick stat I want to look at is of the two, Barack versus Trump, what percentage have private accounts. So again, it's pretty low. Most people on Twitter are public. Just a stat I wanted to look at. So Donald Trump 
of his followers, about 6% of them are private, and versus Barack Obama, 5%. Again, very small, probably not significant. So I hope you learned a little bit about how to use the Twitter API. It's not big and scary. It's very easy to get started with some basic commands. I'm going to link to all these relevant URLs, uh, both on Twitter and showing you the CC data platform below, so you can do all this on your own. And I want to know in the comments, what are you interested in doing with Twitter data? I have a lot more videos I'm prepared to make on Twitter. I just need to know what you want to see from Twitter. Leave comments below with your feedback and let me know, do you want to see more things about followers lists, like how do we get the full 60 million uh, from real Donald Trump? Or do we want to do other things like look into locations or trends or look at actual tweets and do some natural language processing? Let me know in the comments and we'll do some more videos. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. If you like this video, like it. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why in the comments or find some way to get in touch with me and tell me how I can do better. That's it for now. And be sure to watch my other videos on social media scraping, such as Instagram and YouTube. That's it for now. Take care and hope to see you again soon.